So in addition to the eye worms, one of the areas of focus, no pun intended, is the cica or the, the mid-gut of the quail. At the junction of the small and large intestine are two little blind pouches called cica. Typically they're a little bit longer than your little fingers and uh, in a fully developed cica they'll be almost that size and diameter. So Jennifer's going to open up this bird and we'll see what the cica look like and then she'll tell us about the technique for how to dissect the cica and determine how many cecal worms occur. So we're going to want to just open the bird up, skin it back, get to the breast. This bird's still a little bit frozen. A little bit frozen, but it's not going to cause us any problems. Um, I typically will pull back the legs too just to kind of get it open, get us a good view. So we can see that it's got a full crop. Again, this was a bird that died as a result of our trapping and banding uh, from stress. And so you can see its crop was plumb full of milo and then it died uh, before we got it processed. So nice, well-developed breast muscle. That's the other leg. And can just get to it, open, go into the body cavity. If you're a quail hunter, this would be what you're doing when you're breasting the quail. Just put your thumb down underneath the sternum of the breastbone, pulling that up to where you're exposing the um, GI tract. It's a little bit frozen, but the technique's the same. Just got to pull that out. <laughs> There's the uh, internal organs, the viscera. And when we're looking for the cecum, it's going to be on the right side of the bird here, or yeah, the right side, your left side of the bird. And it's going to be this green striated mess in the middle of the intestines. So most of the intestines per se, the small intestine, large intestine are reddish pinkish color, but that greenish kind of vile looking uh, color. And again, it's going to have this kind of a stripe pattern on it. You know, you're looking at the cecum then. And again, mm -hmm. it's a pair. Cecum uh, is singular, cecum plural. So we're looking for uh, these, both of these blind guts. And it's going to join with the small intestine. So you kind of just want to follow it, find the one end where it joins with the small intestine, cut it, and then it's got these coils at the end. You're going to cut that. And then we're going to take this and lay it out flat in our sieve. So once I've got it laid out, I'm going to separate it into the three tracks. So the small intestine, and then both ends. Now you said three tracks. I said there were two cica, so right. what's the third one? The small intestine runs oh, okay. through the middle. Okay. So if we lay this out flat, separate it. And you can see that the cecum, both sides are here. You know, the two green sides, and you've got your small intestine running down the middle. Okay. So there's all this real thin connective tissue. So I usually will just go through, pull that apart. We're not interested in the small intestine. There's not going to be any cecal worms in there. So I like to just get that out of the way. So if we can separate it. Now the size of the cecal can vary with the data based on your experience. Is this an average looking cecal length? Is it small or large? Um, I would say it might be average. I've definitely seen larger ones much larger, but I've also definitely seen smaller ones. And when it's smaller or larger, is that an indication of the worm load that's in it or something else going on? There? Um, I, I don't know if it's much of an indication. It might be a bit of an indication. There might be some more worms in a larger cica, but for the most part, it just depends on how much digesta is in the um, cica. Um, so once we've got the small intestine out, we can put that aside. We don't need that. And then the majority of the worms are going to be up at the top over here where the three branches con uh, joined and then down here in the coils. And so. that's being, those being the terminal pouches, what you're calling the coils is just kind of like they're, they're coiled up on the uh, distal end of the uh, seeker. Right. And so I'll typically go and you find the connective tissue and just kind of uncoil it as best I can so that I can have it out flat.
Again, this is not a technique that you're going to do in the field uh, at the end of the day's hunt. This is a laboratory technique that uh, that we're interested in, but should you be interested in sequel worms, this is the technique you'd use to analyze them for such. So we've got it separated. We've got our two ends, two sides of the okay. cica. And those, so that's, uh, those, that cica is, is roughly probably five inches long, something like that. Wow. And again, you would have never thought that, you know, being coiled up inside the, the uh, body cavity like that. Okay, um, so now what are we going to do? Okay, so now is when we want to actually get to the worms. And the cica, it's like the intestine, so it's two tubes. And so what we want to do is we want to open the tubes up to get to the worms. Okay. So at this angle, we're going to go like this. And I'll just take my forceps and pull it apart. So you can see how I'm laying it flat, opening it up flat. So, you know, see here's the tube still, here's it laying out flat. So I'm gonna do that to the whole length, both sides. And I'll ask you the same question I did about the eye worms, Jennifer. What's the, what do you think the average is at this point? And uh, what's the maximum number you found in some of the birds? Um, I would say the average would be maybe somewhere between two and 300. Um, and the maximum I found was 1,000, and I think it was like 1,200, something like that. 11 or 1,200. That's a lot of worms. It is a lot of worms, it's a lot of counting. Um, so here we can see the difference between this one side that I've opened up and laid out flat, and this other side that's still a tube, and is still intact. So, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my wash bottle and just try to clean it out uh, pressure-wise. Try to get all the digest out this way. And just, I, I hold it up at this angle so everything washes down and so all my worms will end up down here. And they'll be easier to get out that way. So the cica are important for the digestion of fiber. It functions a little bit like the rumen in a, in a cow or a deer. So it's a very important organ for a quail because, especially in late winter, quail are forced to eat something less desirable than seeds or insects. They're eating a lot of uh, a lot more greens, and uh, the cica are especially important there. Our concern is if you've got a quail that whose cica are packed with cica worms. When I say packed, probably anything above 300. We're curious about is there, just by the interference, is that bird uh, less able to, uh, is less able to function with that many worms? So just this little section here, you can see how it's all clean and then I didn't get this section open. So I'm just gonna go through and open it so I can flush it out. And spray it with the bottle. So these are the little pockets down here at the end. So that's where a lot of the worms are gonna be. And so that's where you wanna really make sure you're getting everything out. So then once I get this, I'm gonna run it under the faucet just to kind of make sure I get it all. You know, and make sure there's nothing stuck to it, no worms stuck to it. And then, I'll, re I'll wash everything down into here and get my petri dish and some water. And then I'll just grab all my worms. I typically like to do it under the running water because if um, if they if they start to dry out then they'll just stick to the sieve. So it's easier to grab them this way.
quite a bit more tedious work than the eye worm, isn't it? Definitely. More worms. Usually they're typically smaller than the eye worms. And the sieve isn't... We'll, we'll just grab onto the worms and make it hard to pick them off. But I think I've got them all. And so now I'm going to take it back to the table and count them. You can see the relative size differences between the eye worms here and the sequel worms here. The sequel worms being about half the size of the eye worms. But again, the 300 and how many? 347. 347 here. And uh, we're finding those kinds of numbers uh, not uncommon in our quail. And so uh, we're, we're quite concerned about that. Uh, again, for more information about our whole investigation into the parasites, you can go to our website, quailresearch.org, and learn more about the process and findings that we're doing. Uh, we want to thank Jennifer for her efforts over the last several months. Thank all the hunters who donated quail to this. It's going to be a continuing project, so we hope that you will continue to send us your birds. We want to thank Joe Crafton for his interest in funding, also Park City's quail, and then for, uh, for assistance, uh, Dr. Kendall's lab, Wildlife Toxicology Lab up at Texas Tech University. Thank all those individuals for helping us decipher what the uh, abundance and the impacts of these worms are to quail.